Let's talk about the 12 most influential autistic people. There are so many autistic people who have influenced the world. These are some of the traits we'll be looking for, especially looking back in history to see who may have been on the spectrum. So here are 12 unique and amazing individuals who have influenced the world and who happen to be autistic. Paul Dirac. You may not know this guy, but you probably should. He's one of the most influential physicists of the 20th century. But why do we think he was autistic? We know that he was echolalic when he was younger, which means he would repeat things that he heard. A man who studied with him in Cambridge said this about him. I still find it difficult to talk to him. If I need his advice, I try and formulate my question as briefly as possible. The response would come as from the witness stand. He looks for five minutes at the ceiling, five minutes at the windows, and then says yes or no. And he was always right. He'd respond factually to direct questions. Paul Dirac has been repeatedly referred to as one of the most significant and influential physicists of the 20th century. This Cambridge professor received the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1933, and he almost refused the award because he didn't want to go up in front of people and accept it. He wasn't going to at first, but apparently someone talked him into it. He was not only shy, but he had intense interests and rigid patterns and routines that he depended on. Thank you, Paul, for your impact on the world. Number 11 is Bill Gates, the co-founder of Microsoft Corporation. Have you ever seen this guy in an interview? He almost always will stim. He takes things so literally and now there's actually a Netflix documentary about how his brain works. Bill Gates avoids eye contact and he has a very monotone speech pattern at all times. My husband and I have five kids and our two youngest are autistic. My seven-year-old Ezra is a sweetheart. He's nonverbal, communicates through an iPad, and he has level three, which is the most severe type of autism. It mainly just means he needs more support. And Simon, my youngest, is three. He has level one autism, and he loves cars, and he loves his big boy bed. And just like both of my boys, Bill Gates has an obsession with detail and organization for certain things, not necessarily for everything, but for the things that they're highly interested in. We're teaching my boys how to understand social cues and how to understand body language, and it's really difficult. It can be pretty tricky. Bill Gates has shown many times that he has a hard time with social cues. In the 1970s and 1980s, Bill Gates was a major entrepreneur in the microcomputer revolution. He changed the personal computer industry with the inclusion of base software. We didn't include her on our last video of 12 famous people you didn't know were autistic. And there were so many people in the comments who complained that we didn't put Temple Grandin in there. And I thought to myself, Temple Grandin, if you know about her and her life, you know that she's autistic. So why would we put her in a video of famous people you didn't know were autistic? But still, she is so popular within our community that there were lots of comments wondering why we didn't put her on the list. So she's on this list as number 10 of the most influential autistic people. And for good reason. She was diagnosed with autism as a small child. But if you find out about her life and read her book, you get a really good insight from a perspective of an autistic person. You see how much of a good influence her mother was to help teach her how to be social and how to understand other people. So that wasn't a barrier for her to get where she wanted to be. She's been an incredible force for good in the animal sciences and teaches at Colorado State University. Her book, Emergence Labeled Autistic, is an amazing insight into the world of an autistic person. And she was named one of the top 100 most influential people in Time Magazine. So gotta give her something for that. Temple Grandin, I hope that maybe I can shake your hand someday. Remember to have autism, you have to have traits in three areas. The first area is communication, some kind of issue or deficit in communication. And the second one is social, like not understanding social cues or not understanding what someone's meaning to say if they're not literally saying it. And the third one is repetitive and restrictive behavior and interests. So to have autism, you need to have traits and issues in all three of these areas. Not just one, not just two, all three. Moving on, number nine, Steve Jobs. He was CEO of Apple. He founded it and then it was taken away from him because he wasn't nice to people. I didn't get along with people. And then it really wasn't as successful. It went down gradually. And then he came back and made huge changes and built an incredible company. Steve had an obsession with perfection. He had an unorthodox and very different way of thinking about things and, and working on things, especially with his company. He didn't organize it like a traditional company. He didn't really listen to or pay attention or care about what other people told him to do. We generally know from most or even all people who have worked with him that there was a general disconnect. He had a hard time showing empathy and he had a very difficult time in his relationships. 
but his unique way of experiencing the world inspired people to invent things that we never even dreamed of and now are in the hands of people all over the world. iPod, iPad, smartphones and smartwatches are some of the things that first came from his company. And this has transformed our day and age into an information and technology age and upcoming AI age. It has truly influenced the world. My husband and I sold our home. We moved into an RV with five kids, two on the spectrum, and it would have been so much more difficult to go on that trip in the RV, visiting all the national parks with our kids if we didn't have connection through our smartphones. Any problem we had, we'd go to our phone. If something broke, we'd go to our phone. If we got lost, we'd go to our phone. Our phone had all the answers that we needed during our travels. Because honestly, when we started that journey, we had never spent one night in an RV. You can see that playlist here. We rank all the national parks. We share our family's unique normal with five kids and two on the spectrum. So please consider subscribing. Number eight is Elon Musk. And I'm not saying that he's your favorite person in the world, but listen to all the things he started, funded, or influenced. SpaceX, a company working to create commercialization of space travel. Oh, and Tesla, he was a very early funder of that. I honestly don't know if any of those would exist if it weren't for Elon Musk. And about the fact whether or not he's autistic, he actually announced to the world on a Saturday Night Live show in 2021 that he has Asperger's syndrome. Now understandably, there are a lot of people out there that were originally diagnosed with Asperger's that keep that because it's not only a diagnosis, it's part of their identity. And so I'm not gonna be the one to tell them, hey, you're supposed to say autism, like. I'm not gonna say that. Smart. And plus, it's only here. Lots of places around the world still use Asperger's syndrome. Please put in the comments what you think about that. Do you like that we have autism as a whole umbrella term with different levels? It's fairly complicated if you want to know about those levels. I made that video here. I actually interviewed a doctor and he explains the different levels of autism. Number seven is someone that I'm sure you've heard of. He's extremely famous and for good reason, Michelangelo. He's a sculptor, painter, and poet of the Renaissance era. In 1475, many serious historians believe that Michelangelo most likely was autistic. Here are some things that we know about him. He said to have an intense fixation on his work. He struggled intensely with his emotional regulation and his relationships struggled because of that. To be able to do his work, he needed fixed structure. No one could interrupt and no one could come in and tell him to do anything different. He needed strict routines to be able to do his work. And Michelangelo not only did these jobs like painting the Sistine Chapel and sculpting these amazing statues out of stone, but his work was polarizing and changed the way people did art. He didn't use the rigid rules of the Renaissance era, which Leonardo da Vinci captured really well. Michelangelo he caused trouble. He would take Christian history and pagan symbols, put it together and create an amazing piece of artwork that still stands today. And more often than not, his paintings raised a lot of controversy for his day. Henry Cavendish was a renowned scientist in the 1700s. You might know him for the man who discovered hydrogen. That's a big deal. He literally put another element on this table. Not many people can do that. It's no secret that Henry Cavendish was most likely autistic. He communicated with people, including all of his servants, through writing and not speaking to them. He'd leave a note on the table for his cook and for his housekeeper every day. He even had a separate staircase made at the back of the house and he was the only one who was allowed to use it. Henry Cavendish was said to consider himself as a solitary being in the world and to feel himself unfit for society. Out of the many stories told about him, I think this one's my favorite because it reminds me so much of my son Ezra. Lord Broham, who knew him personally, said this. He saw Cavendish in society and hearing the shill cry he uttered as he shuffled quickly from room to room, seeming to be annoyed if looked at. Yeah, that sounds familiar. I know many autistic people who, when they get to a new place, they have to scout out and explore the area. They need to go down every hall and see every window. My son likes to go through every closet, but yet he needs to do that to help him really ground himself. Is this familiar to you? Put in the comments if it is. Have you seen this with your own kids or do you kind of feel like you need to do this when you go somewhere new? You want to really know the area well to help you feel more at ease. Well, way back when there was an amazing scientist who discovered hydrogen who did the same thing. And we'll be talking more about this on our weekly calls. If you don't know about our autism club, there's a link in the description below where you can join our weekly video chats. We ask and answer questions and talk all things autism. And we can't wait to see you on that next call. Number five is Barbara McClintock, scientist and cytogenesitist. That took me forever to figure out how to say. This lady made breakthroughs in the science of genetics. She earned her PhD in Cornell in botany. And get this, she wasn't allowed to graduate in genetics. And the reason why? because this is the early 1900s and she's a girl. 
That's the reason. Right. This is because I'm a girl. She continued her research and studies after her graduation in 1927. This amazing lady was the first person ever to discover that chromosomes actually changed when they reproduced. Now, why do we think she was autistic? She not only had an extreme fixation on her work, she had rigid schedules that she depended on, and she could focus for long periods of time to work on her genetic studies. And she had a difficult time communicating with people, even in a light conversation. Social interaction was just difficult for her. She was very particular and strict about what she would and would not wear. She did not conform to society norms. And she hated attention so much that at first she refused the Nobel Prize that was given her. But again, someone must have talked her into it. She did finally accept it in 1983. The fourth one is a little controversial. I'd love to know your opinion on this. If you think that this guy's actually autistic, Charles Darwin. There's a lot of people who say, well, he wasn't autistic, but he had this, this, this. He for sure did not fit into society norms. He's a geologist, naturalist, and biologist. And this guy not only discovered new species of plants and animals, but he created new fields of science. Who does that? His theories changed science forever. He not only hated to talk to people and he would write notes, even when someone was right next to him, he'd write them a note and hand it to them and had extreme difficulty carrying on a simple conversation. He was extremely fixated on his work and like Barbara could spend a long, long time on his work without breaks. He would work so long that he would forget to eat. There are records about Charles Darwin's childhood. It says that he was an isolated child. It says he was super quiet and didn't make any effort to make friends. He avoided interaction with everyone as much as he could. And here's an interesting quote about Charles Darwin. He spent eight years studying barnacles and wrote books on his observations of earthworms and even his own children. Number three is dear to my heart because my daughter has her same name, Marie Curie. Marie Curie was born in Poland. She moved to France to go to school. She met Pierre Curie who wanted to marry her and she said, no, <laughs> I'm good. So she went back to Poland and she realized that in Poland, she wasn't allowed to study at the university because she was a girl. So she went back to France, got her PhD, and she did happen to marry Pierre, who supported her fully on her studies. They were an awesome pair. Marie Curie is famous for being the first person to isolate radium. You need that to be able to do x-rays and her base science really helps with cancer treatments as well. I think one of the most amazing things that she did or maybe didn't do in life that was the most influential is she never patented anything. What that means is that she's not getting the money for it. No one has to pay her to use her design or to use her science and the world can access it. Think about all that she gave to the world. It's no wonder that she was not only the first woman to get a Nobel Prize, but also the first person to get two Nobel Prizes in two different fields. And this is my favorite quote from her. It sounds like something one of my autistic boys would say. Be less curious about people and more curious about ideas. Number two was Sir Isaac Newton, astronomer, author, and a key figure in the scientific revolution. He formulated laws of motion and universal gravitation. He founded classical mechanics and he made glasses. Now, 1643, when he was born, was a long time ago. So how in the world can we even speculate that he might have been autistic? Well, one reason is because we have so many quotes written down by people who knew him personally, who describe his behavior and personality. So what does this sound like to you? He was unable to form intimate friendships. That makes me super sad, but I have to remember this was a crazy different time period, a different culture in the 1600s, 400 years ago, well, 390. So people were harsher back then. It was a harder life. Newton was known to isolate himself and not want to go play with friends as a kid. He had great difficulty communicating with others. And according to this guy, he was suspicious and secretive. He was subject to peevish outbreaks of ill temper, even towards those who were his best friends. He became an expert to whatever he set his mind to, whether he was making glasses or creating mechanical objects. He was very good at it and very precise. And this quote is a real insight into his personality. He would sometimes be silent and thoughtful, for above a quarter of an hour together. When he would speak, it was always very much to the purpose. Newton would, with great acuteness, answer a question, but would very seldom start one. And he too would work for such long periods of times that he would forget to eat. Isaac Newton, you lived in a cruel world in the 1600s. Hopefully we're making it better. Thank you for your contribution to the world. Oh, I know, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Hi.
This is Simon. If you want to see his first day of autism preschool, that video is here. It was a big change. And our final number one most influential autistic person is Albert Einstein. He was a German theoretical physicist who developed the theory of relativity. And in 1921, he got the Nobel Peace Prize in physics. He got that for his discovery of photoelectric effect. We can speculate that Albert Einstein most likely was neurodivergent. Some people think he had ADHD, mainly because he had many lectures where he would really confuse people, where he would go from one thought to the next without finishing the ideas or explanations. And that can happen with ADHD. But on the other hand, he was so strict with his routines, he would go on a walk with the same friend, one friend, who later he would say was his only friend, the same time of day, every day. He would take his boat out on the river, the same place, the same day, every day. He could have had autism, could have had ADHD. He most likely had both. As a child, he was shy, alone, and very withdrawn. Einstein said about himself, I am not much with people. I do not socialize because social encounters would distract me from my work. And I really only live for that and it would shorten even further my very limited lifespan. Now let's talk about Einstein's clothes. He had seven identical suits hanging in his closet. So if he has one that he likes, he just got six more, the same kind. As a child, Albert Einstein was echolalic. He would hear things that people would say and he would repeat them. And even into adulthood, he would repeat things that people say verbatim again and again. This video here are 12 autistic people you didn't know who are autistic. Ah! That video right here, do you see it? It's right there.